It's going to be a busy week for Manchester United as far as exits go in the January transfer window. But this video, I want to sort of explain what, what my problem is really with this Manchester United January transfer window. I want to explain it in a bit of detail because Martial leaving, Lingard leaving, we're going to have a discussion about Ahmed Diallo, about Dean Henderson, about Eric Bailly, all these players leaving the club. But Ralph Ragnick has got a midfield which effectively now relies on Scott McTominay not being injured. Scott McTominay, who until he played against Brentford, couldn't play in the holding midfield position. And we're in a massive top four chase ahead of a summer. Are we going to bring in a new manager? There's so many question marks. And I want to run through all of those in this video. So please, if you do enjoy it by the end, it's more of an opinion type uh, video. But lots of you have actually been asking me to do more of these. So hell, here is one. But let's get straight into it. And I'm not saying that everything that United are doing in this January transfer window is bad because far from it. Look, we've got Anthony Martial, who is going to Sevilla. Uh, we're going to get all of his wages covered. 240 grand a week is going to come off the wage bill. 240,000 a week is coming off the wage bill. That's a massive thing for Manchester United. I'm not sure we're going to get any loan fee, but that's huge. That's a significant reduction in wages. And then we skip over to what's going on with Jesse Lingard. And the information that's come out yesterday from Luke Edwards from The Telegraph, suggesting that we're going to get in the region of five to six million in a loan fee for Lingard and his full 80,000 80, pounds a week wages covered. Overall, if you were to combine the 240, 240,000 a week from Martial off the wage bill, plus the 80,000 from Lingard off the wage bill, it's 320 a week. That's just that's 1.28 million a month for February, March, April, May. That's 5 million. There or thereabouts, that's 5 million saved in wages. And you got five to six million loan fee for Jesse Lingard. Add on to the fact that you might well be seeing Ahmad Diallo go out on loan. He was supposed to go to Feyenoord during the summer, but got an injury. Hopefully he can get a loan spell and get the game time that he wants. As well as Dean Henderson being linked with the move away. I don't think Dean Henderson will leave. I think he should leave. I think a player of his age and quality deserves regular first team football. And it's just going to be a bit of a disruptive presence in the dressing room. Not a disruptive, and I'm not saying that he's going to, cause huge disruption, but he must, he'll, be, he'll massively be frustrated. And apparently Eric Bry is frustrated as well after signing a new contract being linked with AC Milan. Now, all of them maybe could go off the wage bill, but the ones that we know there are Anthony Martial, as I said, and Jesse Lingard looks like he's going to be leaving too. That could mean that United, out of simply letting Martial go out on loan and Lingard go out on loan, means we get an extra £10 million. £10 million that we would otherwise not have had. And it's not as if we're poor. Right, it's no, we're not at all. If you look at what um, Laurie Whitwell's been saying about the January transfer window, this is something that's been maintained the entire way through. Ralph Ragnick would have liked an addition or two with Amadou Haidara, one name in his mind. Now, when it comes to Amadou Haidara, I understand the trepidation from Manchester United. Amadou Haidara probably cost, cost in the region of 30 to 40 million, roughly, there or thereabouts. And up until the Ralph Randick came in and became our manager, he's not somebody who was ever really on our list, was he? The only reason he's on the list and being linked with Manchester United is because Ralph Randick is our manager. So I can understand the fact that the club might not want to spend that much money on a player like Hardara, given that Ragnick is a temporary manager until the end of the season. What happens if we sign Hardara, big wages, big signing, and whoever comes in in the summer, they don't like him. And all of a sudden, we've got this player who was signed for someone else. That would be a managerial type signing. I can understand that. But this is where my problem lies. Dennis Zakaria, for example. As I said, let's revert here. And I said, if you if you combine the money saved on the wages of Martial, the wages of Lingard, and the loan fee that's involved indefinitely in Lingard, and maybe with Martial too, although we don't know that, you're looking at around about 10 million, roughly. Dennis Sicari here, Fabrizio Romano tweeting this early this week. Juventus want him, but Borussia Mönchengladbach, they want to sell him for 7 million euros. So that's 7 million euros for a player who, who may well not be the answer in midfield, but I'll tell you who else isn't the answer, and that's Scott McTominay and Nemanja Matic. Manchester United have spent so much money, over, well over a billion since Fergie retired. And still here we are having these conversations about who should play and in, in, who's the powerful midfielder that we don't have. It's a compromise everywhere. And for me, looking at this, I think I, I can't understand personally 
why Manchester United are not compromising here and taking a bit of a risk on maybe a player like Haidara and instead, no, sorry, not Haidara, Zakaria, and, and, and instead deciding that McTominay and Matic are good enough to keep this 4-3-3. Because what we've seen now in the last couple of games is 4-3-3 is the way we're going to take this Manchester United team forward between now and the end of the season and then whatever happens with whoever comes in. Zakaria could come in and offer so much in that role. Look, we've even, we've even turned down a 6.7 million offer from Flamengo for Andreas Pereira. Ignoring everything that's going on with Martial and Lingard, you could literally just sell Pereira and buy Zakaria for the same price. And all of a sudden, Manchester United's squad and the options are better. Because right now, we're one injury away from Scott, to Scott McTominay from playing Nemanja Matic every single week inside that midfield. And we all know he can't do that. He simply hasn't got the legs for it anymore. And McTominay, up until that Brentford game, we didn't think he could play in that holding role. So I just don't see why Manchester United would take such a monumental risk when, in my opinion, there's a pretty risk-free signing. There's a, there's, a quite, there's a couple of them. You can skip along here. We can have a discussion about Bubakar Kamara, who's available for around about 10 million. Uh, I don't know whether he would be the right solution or not, but in the same way that I don't know whether Zakaria is the right solution or not. But I tell you what isn't the right solution. Is Man United doing this, crossing our fingers and hoping that it works out with Scott McTominay and Nemanja Matic. Now, McTominay, to be fair to him, in the last couple of games against Brentford and against West Ham, has really stepped up. Has really stepped up inside that defensive midfield role that we didn't think he could do. But it's just a massive, massive risk for Manchester United to take that. And I think Ralph Randnick deserves that sort of uh, trust and faith put in him. If you look at what he's done in the last 10 games... Only Man City have picked up more points in the Premier League than Manchester United. Only Man City. And we have not been playing well. It's not been a cohesive team. He's, we've been learning on the job. Ragnick's been learning on the job. We've been chopping and changing on the job. But in the last game and a half, second half against Brentford and the full 90 against West Ham, we've seen the best of Manchester United under Ralph Ragnick with a 4-3-3 system that really is working and you can you can you could argue here in the comments which i think plenty of you will you say sam what you're looking at here is is not the answer zakaria is not the answer hadar is not the answer kamara is not the answer to our midfield problems and i would completely agree with you and i would say you you're looking more towards players like declan rice who now we have to have a conversation about and i'll probably do a video on him this week but i would counter that argument and say look you're talking to me about risks and you're talking to me about spending money on midfielders that might not work out. And I would say we spent 35 million on Donny van der Ghost. And we've not played him at all in any way, shape or form. And the only reason, in my opinion, we signed Donny van der Beek was because we saw the opportunity in the market to get a player under the value of what he was worth, given his uh, stature and his success that season. And we took advantage of it. We've not played him at all. And then if you're then going back to what Fabrizio Romano is saying, and Dennis Sicario is available for 7 million euros, the same price that we've turned down for Andreas Pereira, who's currently on loan in Brazil. It just doesn't make any sense to me that Man United wouldn't invest even a, even a bit part of what this is in trying to bolster the key problem inside this squad. Because next season, we're getting a new manager. We know that. We don't know who it is. It could be Eric Ten Hag. It could be Mauricio Pochettino, or according to stories, it could be Luis Enrique after the World Cup with Spain, or it could be Julian Lopetegui. We don't know that yet. But all we do know is that a new permanent manager is coming in. And I'll tell you what that permanent manager will want, Champions League football. It, I just don't see why United would take that risk, because this is a this the Premier League this season is it's a serious challenge for that top four. It's always a race for the top four every single year, but this one just seems a bit mega. Chelsea have been dragged back down into it. Then we've got us, we've got Spurs, we've got a couple of games in hand who definitely are a better team under Conte. And there's no doubt this United team, as I've, as I've shown there with those stats, we're definitely on an upward curve under Ragnick. But there's just a, a, a huge soft underbelly and it lies inside that holding midfield position. And I just fear for what happens if an injury to Scott McTominay, touch wood, if an injury to Scott McTominay happens. And we shouldn't be relying on, on Scott McTominay. Roy Keane is right when he says that Manchester United won't be winning the Premier League or the Champions League when you've got a midfield of Fred and McTominay. And we all know that. We all understand and appreciate that. And that's why I just don't see why Manchester United wouldn't 
take a little bit of a, of course it's a gamble, but I would say it's a calculated gamble. And we've made much bigger gambles, more expensive gambles on different players that haven't worked out. So why wouldn't we look at a cheaper deal? Like, it's not as if there's not, there's, there's, a, there's an abundance of availability. Frank Kesse is going to be out, uh, out of contract in the summer. Bubakar Kamara is going to be out of contract. Then Zakari is going to be out of contract. There's quite a few players who might not be the solution to Man United's midfield problems, but given this is the January transfer window, in my opinion, they could come in and strengthen the, the 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 key part of our squad that needs strengthening. And it might be net zero if you add in the fact that we're saving 320 grand a week on Martial Lingard's wage, Lingard's wages when both of those loan moves are completed and maybe a little bit more if Ahmad leaves on loan or Dean Henderson leaves on loan or if Eric Bailly leaves on loan. And for me, I don't understand it. And for me, it's a little bit of showing a lack of faith in Ragnik and what he's doing. And I think he deserves it. And that's my opinion. That, that for me is what is the problem I currently have with this January transfer window. I just don't see why we wouldn't take a punt and try and improve that midfield. I tell you what, it might not work out. But at the prices that we're being that we're seeing here for Zakaria, the price that we could probably get Kamara for, or even Kessie, I think it will be a calculated gamble that could really work out. And if it doesn't work out, we'd have a player under contract that we could sell in the summer, probably for the same price we bought him for, or maybe a little bit more. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Do you think it's a case of I, I, I'm wrong here that we shouldn't just sign somebody for the sake of strengthening our midfield options, that we should just stick with McTominay and Matic and, I don't know, maybe play Fred there? Or You let me know what you think in the comments. But for me, yeah, that's a bit of a problem I'm, I'm having with watching United in this, in this market in this last week. Radnick wants a signing. I can understand if it's not going to be Hardara, given that he would be far more expensive. But I wouldn't understand if we overlooked Zakaria, Kessie, and, and Kamara simply because of the price. For me, it's a low risk, high reward signing. And that's my opinion. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I wrong? I'm sure you will let me know if I am wrong. <laughs> you always do. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. For next time though, take it easy.